I am Daniel Lukies and welcome to Book 101. Book 101 is all about the books that I read for the last 40 years. And today, I have my special guest. She is the author of the book by accident, a memoir of letting go, no other than Miss Kewan Green. Well, thank you so much, Daniel. It's a pleasure to be on your podcast. Yes, and can you please introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I am a writer, a podcaster, and a speaker. I was born and raised just outside of Boston, Massachusetts, but have lived my entire adult life in Northern California, just north of San Francisco. My career has included working in radio as a talk show host and news anchor. And this is my first full-length book. Wow, congratulations, Ms. Joan. And how does it feel that you produce your memoir? It feels great. It really does. I am someone with a short attention span and most of what I've written have been short pieces always. Uh, writing for broadcast is always short. So taking on a project of this magnitude and completing it feels quite good. I'm proud. What is the big difference of being a writer or a broadcaster? Well, being a writer can mean many different things. And I always called myself a writer. But when I embarked on this project, I learned very quickly that I knew nothing about writing a memoir and that I was really starting from scratch to learn the craft of what it means to write in scene, to write dialogue, um, and to create a structure that makes sense with moving from the present to the past and back to the present. Uh, there was a lot to learn. What age did you realize that you're good in writing? Well, I've written all my life, I have journals dating back to when I was 10 years old, and people have always responded well to what I've written, and this continues today. I have a podcast called In This Story with Joanne Green, and they are my short essays uh, set to music, and um, I, I find it very easy to express myself on the written page. Very well said, Miss John. Who are your favorite authors that influence you the most? Oh, there are so many, um, but I was really thrilled to get a blurb, a little endorsement for my book from one of my favorite authors, Anne Lamott. Um, it's on the cover of my book at this point, and it says, this is an amazing book, harrowing, deeply human and charming. I absolutely could not put it down. You describe Lamont writing. What is it? Authentic, humorous, insightful, sometimes self-effacing, um, just bits of wisdom embedded in compelling stories. Did you get those criteria in your memoir? I hope so. That's what I was shooting for. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback right now, and that is encouraging. Lots of good reviews, and um, it seems that people find little gems of wisdom in there. the The idea with a memoir is is not an autobiography. A lot of people autobiography are the same thing. They're not. Autobiography is the story of one's life. Memoir is a chapter or a phase or a particular period of time in one's life where you share the stories, but with universal appeal, the goal being that readers can find themselves in your story. And I'm finding that to be the case. Um, people tell me they feel like we're a lot alike. So I think that's a good sign. Yes, indeed. And what are your long-term and short-term goals in writing? At this point, I don't necessarily have any 
friends to write another full length book. Um, I want to be a speaker because I have a, a very, I think, solid, relatable message about tools that can help all of us move through challenging times in life. And there are going to be challenging times in all of our lives, be they losses, illnesses, injuries, failures of any sort. And I've learned some lessons that I think are pretty universally applicable. So I want to be a speaker to be able to share those. I also want to continue writing shorter essays because that's really my wheelhouse. That's really where I'm most comfortable. And because I have a long career as a broadcaster, that's my medium is to be able to share my stories in the audio format. And I'm fortunate enough to be married to a production guy. So he's producing these for me and adding music and making making each of these stories. The, the, the series is called In This Story with Joanne Green. And uh, I want to continue doing that for well out into the future. Good luck, Miss Joanne, for your goals. And before we go on, I want to shout out to the people listening in Argentina. Muchas gracias, Argentina, because in Buenos Aires FD, I get 45% on share. Tucumán at 32%, Buenos Aires, the capital at 18%, and Mendoza at 5%. Again, muchos gracias, Argentina, for supporting this podcast, because this podcast is created to empower writers all over the world, just like Miss Joanne Green. Miss Joanne, by accident, a memoir of letting go what behind the title of your memoir. I was always a person in in control or thinking that I was in complete control. Uh, I felt safer when I was behind the wheel than if I was a passenger in a car. I, I think I tried to control too much. And, and I learned after my accident, when I had no control over anything, I wasn't even able to take care of myself, that control is a seductive illusion. And we can't really control things in our lives, but what we can control is how we respond to what happens to us. So this is for all the people that think they have everything under control. Interesting indeed, Ms. Joanne. By accident, a memoir of letting go, how did you craft it? Very, very gradually and with a lot of help. Um, I worked on it while I was working full time, but could only make so much progress because I was tired at the end of the day. Uh, but once COVID hit, um, I retired from my job and then I was able to book full time and was able to get it done. John, can you share to us the accident happened to you that makes this turning point of your life? You bet. I was walking across the street in broad daylight, in a crosswalk, a car stopped for me. And just as I got in front of that car, I heard what sounded like an explosion, but it was in fact the sound of a truck hitting that car. And then I was airborne. The, the car hit me, the car that was still hit me on my right side. I flew up onto her hood. She was catapulted down the street about 50 feet with me on the hood of her car. And then I fell off onto the street. I never lost consciousness. I was in shock, but shortly thereafter the pain started and the ambulance came and I was hospitalized for five days with four pelvic fractures and a lot of internal bleeding and my recovery, my full recovery I'm happy to report. I have no residual damage. My full recovery took a year and a half. Wow. It, do you think this is a miracle, Ms. Jian? Yeah, in some ways I do. I think that there are miracles every day. I think we don't notice them. I think part of our job is to tune in and notice the miracles that are happening all around us. And that fills us with wonder. And when we're filled with wonder, we are open and 
grateful for the gifts that were being given. And it's one of the many lessons I learned. Yes, indeed. And can you explain to us one of these narratives saying, by accident, a story about discovering that control is seductive illusion? I think that it's a delicate balance that we must maintain between feeling our feelings, which in some cases involve feeling sad, feeling senses of loss, feeling sorry for ourselves, and feeling empowered that we can move through this. I had a, mon a mantra that just popped into my head as soon as the accident happened, which was, okay, let's do this. And then throughout my recovery at the worst moments, I kept saying to myself, I can do this. I can do this. You know, I think um, we give ourselves messages all the time. And far too often, the messages that we give ourselves are, who do you think you are? What do you think you're doing? Um, really questioning our own ability to be out there in the world and maintain the confidence that it takes to accomplish things. And I learned that even if you don't believe the positive messages right at the beginning, if you give yourself positive messages, eventually in time, you will start believing it and it will empower you to move forward. Do you have self-pity when uh, in the process of recovering? Sure, but I quote a friend of mine in the book who helped me greatly by saying, you can visit the pity pot, but don't be packing your bags and moving in. So it's fine to grieve and mourn your losses. And after an accident, you certainly are grieving the loss of independence. Um, but it was temporary and I regained that independence. And so you can feel sorry for yourself, but don't remain in that state. Feel the pain, let it let it seep through all your pores, and then dust yourself off, pick yourself up, and move forward. So the accident happened to you. It is a turning point to your life to be a better person? I would say absolutely. At this point, I, I don't regret that it happened at all. I'm grateful that it happened. So it happened for a reason? I believe everything happens for a reason. And can you give us five things that you can share to us that you are being grateful for that accident? Yeah, um, I'm grateful for learning to slow down and live my life not at a frenetic pace. Um, I'm grateful for finding the time to share my story, to dig deep to undertake a project that is, I couldn't see the end of it when I started, and that was brand new for me. Um, I'm grateful that I've learned a kind of compassion that I can empathize with, and I believe at this point in my life, help other people who receive a difficult diagnosis or face an injury and a long recovery. I'm able to help them with some of what I learned. I take very little for granted now because I know that every pain-free day is a gift. And my marriage and my relationships with my sons and my close friends have all been strengthened as a result of allowing them in and giving them the opportunity to help me because giving is really getting. Yes, very well said, Ms. Joanne. And according to MS from Canada, a powerful memoir. What are the elements that you put in the book that make this powerful memoir? I think authenticity. I think really sharing openly and not holding back anything really. Um, resonates for people. And I, I think there, I learned a lot about the craft of how to bring to a moment and create a scene. And it involves helping the reader 
really feel what's happening, hear what's happening, see, smell what's happening. And you can do this on the printed page. I also have an audio book um, of By Accident. So if people prefer to listen to books, they can get it on any of the traditional platforms for purchasing audiobooks. Yes. And according to Miss Jennifer G, transformative. What are the insights in the book that they say it's very transformative? Well, I certainly transformed. I hope that other people feel that when they read it. Um, there, I, I use the phrase post traumatic growth. We, uh, we often hear the traumatic stress, and that's very real, no question. And I certainly felt that. I had flashbacks of the accident. I was terrified of for a long time. Um, but we also have the opportunity after trauma to have incredible bursts. And with help, I was able to do that. So uh, there, that's where I really transformed. Yes, indeed. And according to Tricia Gibbs, a fabulous memoir, beautifully written. Wow, I love this, Miss John. And I want to shout out to the people listening in California. There's a lot of places in California, so I will not name them all. I have 114 places. Thank you so much for the bottom of my heart, California. Before we go on, I'm inviting you to listen to my other podcast, Food 101, on our third season with Chef Alessandro, one of the best executive chefs in one of the best restaurants in downtown Toronto. So please do listen, Food 101. Our, our latest episode, we talk about Grissini, Grissini, people, one of the trademark of Italian cuisine. Plus one more, our books are out. Not one, but seven volumes. Food 101, Volume 1, Basics until 7 is out, available on Amazon and leading online bookstores worldwide. So, Miss Joanne, if you want to go back and revise the book itself, which part of the book you want to revise? I don't. Is that a reasonable answer? I think it it stands right the way it is, and I'm I'm very proud of it. It is a reasonable because your memoir is one of a kind. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Which chapter you enjoy the most? Oh gosh, um, I reworked so many of the chapters again and again and again and. Maybe I'll say the epilogue, which is it takes place years after the rest of the book. And it really shows me it was it allowed me to write about the thrill of watching my granddaughter, who had been born, um, being so free and letting go quite naturally. So sometimes we can learn things from children. Definitely. Children are the best portal in everything <laughs> do you have another option for the title of your memoir no i didn't um i really didn't when i landed on by accident then discovered that there was no other book by that name i was shocked to learn that um i landed on it and stayed with it right from that moment i was um the baby of the family also by a mile. My, my parents were in their 40s when they had me. My brother was 13. My sister was eight. And so my existence was an accident. And then this title was so perfect is that it referred both to that and the fact that my growth happened as a result of an accident. And I say at the end of the book, maybe there are no accidents. Maybe all of them was meant to be. Yes, it happened for a reason. So can you explain us the cover of your book? Why is it abstract? Well, I think that the artist, the designer who worked on it, um, was trying to create of a person breaking apart many pieces and then yet coming back together. What is the best highlight of your memoir? As in, do you want me to read a little section for you? Yes, please do. 
Well, there are many, um, but I would say the very first chapter is the accident itself. And readers tell me that as they read it, they're, you know, they're really holding their breath because I bring you right into what that felt like to be lying on the street and the police and the cars and people screaming. Chapter two begins as follows. Being hit by a car is not my first blow, although it's probably the most literal, and it won't be my last, but it will be a catalyst for me, a sudden graphic stop to my constantly in motion existence, my need to produce and achieve to feel worthy of love, my need to control everything because I've believed that it would make me safer. It will be the test that finally teaches me that my needs are masks and that control is an illusion. I've had plenty of opportunities, losses, hard ones, to learn to let go, but I grieved my losses and went right back to my old ways. The accident has stripped me, made me totally dependent on others, put cracks in my bones, and revealed cracks in my armor. I can't go back to my old ways, not easily anyway. Over time and through a series of other physical and emotional challenges, I will discover that losing control can be the best way to truly gain it. Letting go means letting in light, revealing my real power, and finally feeling that deep sense of peace that I'd been desperate to find. Wow, the best highlight, Miss Joanne. And according to Jeff Wayman, an important and inspiring work. And it's a congrats on a real triumph in both life, literary accomplishment. Do you think this book will be your legacy? Yeah. I mean, part of my legacy, I would say that my greatest legacy are my children and now my grandchildren. Um, I have two grandchildren and a third one on the way, God willing. And um, I say this book for sure Um and also my micro essays, the podcasts in this story with Joanne Green, which are available on all the podcast platforms. Yes, congratulations, Ms. Joanne. You wrote a memoir. For sure, in later life, you're going to write an autobiography. No, I don't think so. I think that... Um, Essays are the way to go now. So they're all fragments of stories from my life that were particularly meaningful or particularly funny or notable for some reason. Um, and my goal is laugh and learn and listen. So, Ms. Joanne, invite our listeners to listen to your podcast. Yes, please subscribe to In This Story. And please... Um, Buy and read by accident a memoir of letting go. It's available as an ebook, in paperback, and as an audiobook. If you define life, what is life to you? Oh, life is opportunity. Life is a big blank slate. And what I've learned is that you can't feel sorry for yourself and feel gratitude at the same time. Gratitude will always win out so that if we can be aware and notice the miracles around us, our life will be much richer. Yes, very well said, Ms. Joanne. By accident, a memoir of letting go by Ms. Joanne Green. Let's support her. Thank you for your time, Ms. Joanne. Thank you, Daniel. Bodyguard people, see you soon.